is our cup, fill it up. You are the potter, we are the clay. And so we give you the sacrifice, our living sacrifice. And it's not our will. Sometimes our will collides with yours, but we surrender to your will. We surrender to your will. So if that's what you desire to do, just say, Lord, I surrender all to you, everything to you, even though I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Even what's going on right now is so confusing. There's so much confusion everywhere. And so that's where you just let go. And it says, "All is your all on the altar? Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your all that the spirit control. You just need to let the Lord know that I give it to you. Hallelujah. I give myself away. Oh, oh, oh. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Man, what a, what a worship, what a worship experience. My God, my God, what a worship experience we had right just now. The power of the Lord. The power of the Lord is right here on this live feed. I know you feel it because I feel it. And so we thank God. We thank God, man, the praise team so dedicated to leading us into the presence of God, so dedicated, we thank uh, Lady Nicole and the Life Center Praise Team members and the band, man, the band, just for all they do in leading us into the presence of the Lord. Come on, put your hands together right where you are. Give God one more good praise and thank God for the gifts that he has given to us here at Life Center. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles and let's go to Romans chapter number eight, Romans chapter number eight, beginning at verse number one, Romans chapter eight, beginning at verse number one. And then we're going to jump down to verse number 31, Romans chapter eight, beginning at verse number one. And then we're going to jump down to verse number 31. The Bible says, therefore, there is now, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Before we start reading, we've got to say our declaration. We've got to say our declaration. Uh, come on, say it with me. I am not moved by what I see. I am not moved by what I hear. I'm moved by what I believe. And I believe the word of God. The victory is mine. I have it now. And I can see it through my eyes of faith. God bless you. God bless you. All right, Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse number 1, the Bible says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Jump down to verse number 31. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died? More than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present, or the future, or any powers, or height, or depth, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Father, we thank you today. You are good, you are kind, you are wonderful. And we thank you, Lord God, for all you have done and are doing even through this time in our lives and this time in our country. We pray, Father, that as we continue to look to you, as we continue to look for you, to you for the best that is yet to come, as we, we spoke on last week, as we continue to look for that, give us the faith to stay in you and to abide in you and to keep a hold on what you have promised us. 
We bless you and we thank you for those who are hearing on today and who are listening on today. And I pray that, Father, those who are hearing and those who are listening and those who have tuned in on today, that you, Father, would lift their heart, that you would lift their spirit, that you would lift their mind, that you would give them direction, give them hope, give them peace, give them strength, Lord God, and fortify their faith in you. We pray, Lord God, that because we have tuned in, because we have come together and gathered here collectively, Lord God, and gathered here collectively to hear your word and to worship you, that you bless every home and every house and every, every, every ear that is listening. Now, Father, let us speak your word, speak life to your people. And Father, as we speak life to your people, let them see the change happening in their lives. Let them see the difference from having heard this word on today. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. All right, I, I want to talk to you. Uh, I want to talk to you about being conquerors in him. Conquerors with him. Conquerors in him. Romans comes first in order of three great doctrinal epistles. There are, there are letters, there are epistles, but these, the doctrinal epistles, Romans to me, comes first in order of the three great, the others being Ephesians and First and Thessalonians. And I, I'm partial to Romans because Romans contains the ABCs of the believer's education. It, just, it, 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 it has the foundation of the believer's walk with God. It, it, it gives us the fundamental foundation and the fundamental uh, uh, ground that is laid uh, for us to be a child of God. And the fundamental piece that uh, the fundamental text I, of, of, of the book is that the just shall live by faith. In other words, the just, those that are righteous, those that are the ecclesia, those that are or ecclesia, or those that are called out, they live, they survive, and they thrive on faith, on what they have attached their faith to. We survive because of what we believe. We survive and we maintain in the midst of all of the things that come to deter us because of what we believe. We do not survive by happenstance. We do not survive by, by luck. We do not survive by, by, by any other thing than the faith that we have in what Christ has done. So Romans sets the stage for this thinking. It begins to give us the fundamentals that we need and the building blocks for, for surviving by faith. He opens up the book by uh, talking to the Gentiles. And in Romans 1, the Gentiles are guilty before God because of their immorality because of the things that they are partaking in, the things that they are doing. And he goes on in chapter number two, and the Jews are guilty before God as well. So before we get out of chapter two, the, the Gentiles are guilty and the Jews are guilty because they have been no better than the Gentiles. And you say, well, how does this build the fundamentals? And he, he brings it to a conclusion and, and wraps it up, not a conclusion, but he wraps up that thought process for us in chapter three in building the fundamentals of our Christian walk to help us to understand that all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. In other words, that is none that is without sin no matter who you are, no matter how long you have walked this walk, no matter how long you have been a believer, no matter how long you have been a Christian, no matter how long you have been quote unquote saved, no matter how long you have been walking with God, all have sinned 
and fallen short of the glory of God. Truth be told, we all miss the mark sometimes. We all fail sometimes. We all have issues at, from now and then. There is nobody that, 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 that lives without missing the mark sometimes. And so he says we all <coughs> have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. And so because of the fact that there is none righteous but him, and we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, he de begins to explain in chapter number four another fundamental principle. And he begins to help us to understand that salvation is not predicated on works, but it is predicated by faith. The just shall live by faith and therefore it is not predicated because we have all sinned because we have all fallen short because the Gentiles have have not pleased God or the Jews and everybody no matter who they are or their background or their creed everybody is in need of a savior so he says salvation is not predicated on works. It is not predicated on what you do. Your salvation is not predicated on how uh, many Hail Marys you say. Your salvation is not predicated on what you eat or what you don't eat. Your salvation is not predicated on all of those things, but it is not on works, but it is by your faith. So because, uh, because it is a faith thing, because it is a thing of faith, a thing that has to be believed, because it is a thing that you have to believe and trust God for, the enemy wants to change what you believe. The enemy wants to change how you think about what you believe. He wants to change because it is not predicated on your works, but on faith faith in Jesus, he wants you to, to get it twisted. In other words, the enemy does not want you to totally believe in what Jesus has done. The enemy and the, it does not totally want you to believe in what the cross has provided. And so the trick that the enemy will use as we build the foundation of, of our Christian walk, he will try to use guilt and condemnation. He tries to get you to a place to where you forget that it is not by works that you are saved and he will try to get you to forfeit what you believe because of what you've done. That's why Paul, as he is building this foundation for us, he says in Romans chapter 5 that there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. In other words, he says you have sinned and you have fallen short, but because salvation is not about what you have done, but about what he did, there is therefore or now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. In other words, what he's saying to us is that our spirituality is not based on what we do, but it is based on the fact of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. And so the enemy, you cannot allow the enemy to guilt your mind into a place to where you no longer have faith in what God has done. And so we get all the way to chapter number six of the book of Romans and the, Romans six becomes the pivotal passage. In other words, there is a shifting and we move from the culmination of Paul's presentation that those who are spiritually dead can come to life through Christ and we are moved into Paul's other presentation or his subsequent presentation that the true believer as an affirmation of their freedom can live a victorious and a righteous life. 
life we get from the place of trying to struggle with our mindset to understand that we can live victorious through Christ. There is no uh, rule that says that you cannot live a victorious life. There is nothing that says that you cannot have victory over the sin of your life. There is nothing that says, but you can have the victory and you can have the freedom and you can live victorious in Jesus Christ. And so it is for me now as we get into the middle part of the book, the eighth chapter is one of the most uh, intriguing in scripture to me because the eighth and the seventh, in my opinion, are the most profound psychological passages of the Bible. The seventh chapter presents the problem uh, and the eighth presents the solution. The seventh chapter presents for us the problem and that is the conscience or the battle of the mind. It presents for us the battle and Paul opens up for us and allows us to get inside of the believer who is struggling. It allows us to get inside the mind of the believer that 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 is really trying to have this spiritual battle. I don't know about you, but there are times in my life when I have a spiritual battle. There are times in my life when I have a spiritual fight. There are times in my life where I don't always win. There are times in my life where the enemy attacks me. Maybe he doesn't attack you like he attacks me, but there are times in my life when the enemy attacks me and I feel like Paul. Paul said it like this. He says, now I want you, I'm going to let you inside my mind because you are going to have these feelings and these emotions and I don't want you to feel like you're having them all by yourself. He says, when I would do good. He says, there are times that I want to do good and evil is always present. Watch this. He says, and what I want want to do, I don't do. And the thing that I don't want to do, I end up doing. He says, I find that there is always a law in my members that is working against the law of my mind. In other words, what Paul is saying to us that uh, I understand that there are times when you struggle. And he says, I don't always always do the right thing. I don't know about you. Maybe you always do the right thing, but I don't always do the right thing. I don't always make the right choices. I don't always go in the right direction. I don't always say the right thing, but sometimes when I want to do what is right, I don't do what is right. And when I know what not to do, I still do it anyway. And so Paul chapter 7, he presents us with the problem of the battle of our mind between what to do and what not to do. And so I don't get it right all the time. If I listen, don't let me leave me out here by myself. If, if, if you like me, can you just can you just say me too, me too, me too. I don't get it right all the time. And so the eighth chapter by the time we get to chapter number eight of the book of Romans. The eighth chapter presents the solution of, to the problem that we've got in the seventh chapter. The problem is the seventh chapter is I've got the law of my members and the law of my mind fighting with each other. And the solution to it in the eighth chapter is I've got to abide in the love of Christ. Uh, the two laws mentioned in the last chapters have now changed places. The one being mighty from being powerless, the mind, and the other powerless from being mighty, the members. In other words, the, the members had control at one point, but because I'm resting in Christ, my mind is able to 
to keep my members under control. I don't know who I'm talking to or who this is for, but when you have faith in the love of Christ and that he had for you, you don't have to continue to let your members overrule your mind or your body to overrule your mind, but your mind and your thoughts can overrule your body. Struggle of the two now because I didn't understand this all along. I didn't always understand that I could win the battle. I didn't always understand that with Christ, I don't have to lose the battle. Some of the things that I failed at and some of the things that I did and some of the places that I've gone and some of the things that I participated in, they've left an indelible imprint on my mind. I'm just going to talk about me. Uh, I'm just going to talk about me. They've left an indelible imprint on my mind. But uh, I want to say to you that uh, many of you have, have done some things that, that you wish you could forget. You've done some things that you wish you didn't have to remember. You've done some things that you wish you didn't have to have 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 hashed in your mind you've done some things and the struggle of the things that I've done being imprinted on your mind he says you cannot let what's been imprinted on your mind cause you not to walk in the full liberty that Christ has given you listen I want to declare to you today that he who the sun sets free is free indeed and Jesus has created the liberty for you to walk without condemnation because of the things that you have done because of the things that you have 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 failed at you do not have to walk in condemnation to those things anymore so the struggle of the two oftentimes leaves an imprint on your mind and that imprint on your mind will cause you to feel and act certain ways that that will cause you to lose out on the liberty that God has declared for you listen the greatest liberty that God has declared that God has given us is the liberty from the condemnation of our own mind the greatest liberty that God has given you is the liberty from the condemnation of your own guilt. Sometimes you are your own worst enemy because you won't forgive yourself. You won't forgive your own thinking. You won't forgive your own behaviors. You won't let yourself live it down. Other people have forgotten, but you won't forget where you have failed. But the greatest liberty that God has given us is the liberty to be free from our own own guilt and from our own mind that's why he began the verse number chapter number eight saying there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus listen the devil <coughs> blessing you know, the devil convinced you that that you didn't deserve any better because of what you've done some of you the enemy has convinced you that you don't deserve any better because of the things that you have done the enemy has convinced some of you that you don't deserve to have peace because of what you have done the enemy has convinced some of you you don't deserve to have joy because of what you have done the enemy has convinced some of you that you don't deserve to have happiness because of what you have done. The enemy convinced some of you, you don't deserve to have the joy and the peace of the Lord because of what you have done. But I'm telling you on this morning that the enemy is a liar and it's not about what you deserve because at the end of the day, we all don't deserve it. But because of what Jesus has done uh, he allows it to be uh, and so you have to learn uh, that you cannot stop cheating yourself uh, out of the blessings of God uh, because of the guilt of the enemy you can't 
teach yourself out of the blessings of God because of the guilt that the enemy keeps playing in your mind. I want to declare to somebody that's listening in today that it's time to go back and get some things that the, the enemy has guilted you out of. You have to go back and grab some stuff that the enemy has convinced you you cannot have. Some of you need to go back and grab some things that the enemy has convinced you you don't deserve. Listen, when you understand what God has done and that there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit then you understand that God has provided a way for me in spite of me to keep my joy. God has provided a way for me in spite of me to be strong and to be stable. God has provided a way for me in spite of me to be happy. God has provided a way for me in spite of me to have peace of mind. God has provided a way for me in spite of me to have joy in my heart. God has provided a way for me in spite of me not to live beneath my privilege. God has provided a way for me in spite of me and I thank him for the way that he has provided. Put your hands together. Open up your mouth and give God a praise right there. He has provided for me a way. He has provided for me a way. My victory is not based on me. My joy is not based on me. My happiness is not because of me. My breakthrough is not based on me. My deliverance is not based on me. Listen, when he is trying to to free your mind, but God today, he says, I'm trying to free your mind. I'm trying to free your mind. I'm trying to free your mind because you keep beating yourself up. I'm trying to free your mind because you won't forgive yourself. I'm trying to free your mind because you keep finding fault where I have given peace. I'm trying to free your mind because you will not learn to walk in the peace that I provided. I'm trying to free your mind. You got to let him free your mind. Come on, type in the car. Tell him, free, free your mind, free your mind. Say, Lord, free my mind, free my mind. When he is trying to free your mind, he identifies for you uh, the source of the attack. And he does not leave it up for interpretation. But he says in Romans 8, 31, he says, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, uh, if God is on my side, he says, who can be against you? Uh, I want you to understand that your biggest problem is not what your biggest problem problem is who? Your biggest problem is not things. Your biggest problem is people. I tell you all the time about the people that you have in your circle. I tell you all the time about the people that you have. I read a quote on yesterday. It said the people that I, I realize the people that are in my circle aren't always in my corner. You've got to understand that just because people are around you doesn't mean they're fighting for you. Just because people are around you doesn't mean they have your best interest at heart because people are around you doesn't always mean that they hope that you will win. He says, who can lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Sometimes some of you have friends like Job. Job's friends could not believe by what they saw him going through that he hadn't done something to deserve it. And they spent an entire book trying to convince him uh, that he did not, that he deserved everything uh, that he got. 
got. Some of you all got friends like Job. They won't let you live down your past. Some of you got friends like Job. They always trying to bring up your failures. Some of you got friends like Job, but you need to learn to look your friends in the face and say, you know what? Uh, by the blood of Jesus, I'm not guilty. Uh, because of what Christ has done, I'm not guilty. Uh, because I've accepted him, I'm not guilty. Because he's accepted me, I'm not guilty. You got to be careful of who you run with because the enemy knows that the key to your victory uh, is directly connected to your proximity to Christ. Uh, and so he will use whoever he can use uh, to disconnect you from the Christ, to disconnect you from him. That's why he said, who can separate us from the love of Christ. So who will separate me? Listen, I'm not going nowhere. I'm not separating from his love. If I'm going to be a conqueror, I'm going to be a conqueror in him. If I'm going to conquer anything, I'm not going to conquer it outside of him. And so who have you allowed in your space to handicap you and allow you to walk past the things uh, that God has for you uh, because they keep your mind uh, where God has already delivered you from. Uh, listen, you have to understand that no matter what the enemy brings your way, that God has provided uh, a way for you to conquer in Jesus. No matter what the enemy turns in your direction, God has provided a way for you to be a conqueror in Jesus. No matter which way the enemy fights against you, the Lord has provided a way for you to be a conqueror in Jesus. He may bring tribulation, but we understand that through much tribulation, we enter into the kingdom of God. He may bring strength. But I understand that through God, he will keep my mind in perfect peace. If I keep my mind stayed on him, he may bring persecution, but I don't let it discourage me because many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord, but the Lord, but the Lord will deliver me out of them all. I may not have all I want. I may not have all that that people think that I need but I think I will tell you is that I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed breaking bread it doesn't matter what the enemy brings your way or what God allows it might be peril it might be sword but one thing I know that though he slay me I'll never stop trusting him though he slay me I'll never stop believing him though he allows it I'll never stop Stop having faith in him. I believe what God said and I am persuaded that neither height nor death, no matter what you throw my way, it's going to separate me from the love of Jesus. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm going to encourage you today. Stay with Jesus. Walk with Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. Hold on to his hand. You've got the victory. You are more than a conqueror in him. You are more than a victor in him. You are more than powerful in him. Whatever you do, don't get out of him. You're a conqueror in Jesus. Today, stay in Jesus. Stay in him. Stay in his word. You are more than conquerors through him that loved us, stay in him. You're more than that. Listen, today, you cannot let anyone anymore cause you to forfeit your position in him. You're more than a conqueror through him loves you and he loves you so much that he sent his only son 
that whoever believes will not perish, but have everlasting life. Stay in him. Remain a conqueror. Stay in him. Remain in your joy. Stay in him. In him is your peace. Stay in him. In him is your victory. Stay in him. And as you stay in him, he will direct you and lead you in every way that you need to go. Don't quit. Don't stop. Don't leave. Who shall separate me? Nobody. Just somebody declare before we get out of here, nobody, 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 all up and down this timeline, somebody just declare nobody because I believe him. I believe him. God bless you. Stay in him. Stay encouraged. Stay loving him. And stay being a conqueror through him that loves you. People of God, what he has provided for us, you have to learn to take advantage of. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And if you are walking after him, if you know that you are walking after him, you do not have to live another day feeling guilty about past choices, about past decisions. Today, let it go. Today, release it. And anybody who can't let it go and doesn't want to release it and wants to hold you in, in, in bondage to it and hold you accountable, to you need to let them go. Because God has forgiven, God has provided a way for you to live free from the guilt of past bad decisions. Today, a lot of people don't think they can have a relationship with God because of past bad decisions, but he wiped all that away when he sent his son and went, he went to the cross for you. Listen, today you can start anew. Today you can say, you know what, I never heard before that I can be new. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are become to new. Today, you can be that new creature. Come on, if you want to be that new creature, why don't you just pray with me? You can accept Christ. You can accept Christ today, and you can be a new creature in him. Come on, pray with me if you're ready to accept him. And say, Lord, I am a sinner. I'm undone. And Father, today, I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you, Lord God, to accept my faith in the cross. And let my faith in the cross, Lord God, draw me close to you. Now, Father, I ask that you be my God, be my Savior. I believe in what your son did on the cross and in the resurrection that I can walk in the newness of life. And Father, because of that belief, Lord God, I pray that you, Lord God, would give me your salvation. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you on today. God bless you on the day. And I pray that you would move in the direction of the joy and the peace that God has decided for you. Come back and join us again. Come back and join us again. And we'll see you on the next time you are able to continue to follow us whether here or on YouTube but come back join us again share this with your brothers your sisters your parents your friends share this with them so that they can know that they can make a conqueror in Jesus too God bless you